I, I think I think what he was asking about was it was an interesting place that this urban music sound exploded in, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, yeah. For it to happen in Minneapolis yeah. was very, you know, when I look back on it, it, it when I was here, it didn't. I didn't think it was weird because right. it felt normal, but right. when you look back on it, yeah, it was very weird that it did happen. Put a transistor radio under, back in, in my day, we had transistor radios, little tiny things, right? You probably don't remember those things. I remember iPods. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, know, you don't know what I'm talking about. No. I had it under my pillow because, of course, I had to be in bed to get up for school. And I, I could get WLS from Chicago in St. Cloud, and I could pull in KAAY from Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, Beacon Street was the name of the radio show, and they played a lot of a lot of music, a lot of you know white-oriented pop music, but mainly they played a lot of what I was keying in on was the was the rhythm and blues, the roots, you know, mm -hmm. the roots of the whole deal. Otis Redding, Sam Cooke, and and they played some blues. They played some Robert Johnson and some, and some, some of that real you know muddy waters before lip sync before funky town before before prince before the time before all of that happened right. there were the, the bands this was an agricultural area of the country mm -hmm. and and so the, they 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 programmed radio to appeal to ag agriculture and that type of advertising right. that was white people yeah. and so that so blues and and white blues bands and white white country rock bands were the biggest things here. Yeah. There were there mm -hmm. were before mm -hmm. Prince got a deal, there was a there was a group called Daisy Dillman out of this town that got a major record deal. They were a white country Dillman. rock group. And Lamont right. Cranston was a was a big white blues band. Sure. Um, the, the, the blues brothers, Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi, they they followed them around. That's how they got their characters. Okay. They followed around Lamont Cranston. Right, right, right. Then these were white bands, you know. But the brothers in this town they didn't really have a place to work. Mm -hmm. The black bands, yeah, you know, right. Prince and the, and the Flight Time and those guys, they exclusively worked at black clubs. Mm -hmm. They didn't cross over into the white clubs where Lamont Cranston and Daisy Dillman were working. Yeah. So they kind of got pissed. Mm -hmm. So they kind of went, well, okay, f you know, yeah. f forget you. I'm, I, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to transcend you and I'm going to rise above you and I'm going to own your club. Right, you, right. you won't let me work in your club. I'll buy your club, right, right, and by right, then right. I won't even want to buy your club because I'll have so much money I won't even care about it. And that is specifically exactly what happened. Yeah, they right. succeeded, and it was a beautiful thing to watch. Mm -hmm. Really, yeah. right? And I think Prince was very much aware of diversity mm -hmm. as a part of his thing. And I yeah. don't know if that was a, a planned thing, but I also think that was just part of the way the scene was in Minneapolis in the eighties. Mm -hmm. I mean, because. There was a very cool mixing of people, colors, races, in bands, and the music is what brought it all together here. Yeah. And Prince was a big catalyst to that. It was happening before Prince, but Prince really was a catalyst because that brought industry to Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anymore. it's not like it was. You know, during during when when Prince hit and the time hit and Alexander right. O'Neill came and and Rocky Robbins, Jimmy there was a Terry, lot, there, the Jimmy and Terry and yeah. the whole thing. There was a real scene Even here. The Jets, the Jets were from Minneapolis yep. too, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and it, I mean, it was fun being here as a musician because people were coming from all over and, and, and hanging out and watching the scene. And yeah, I mean, every scene has its, has its day, and it's, sure. and it's over. Yeah. There are a lot of talented musicians still living, residing in Minneapolis, uh, residual effect from the scene, but and they were all here before. Young ones coming up too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Phenomenal young musicians and, and a whole lot of real shitty ones too that should <laughs> that shouldn't no I'm gonna say that that should not be on stage at all, you know. But but there there's some great, great talent that's 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 coming up. Thank God for that.